Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. like fine oil upon the head, flowing down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of its robe. It is like the dew of Hermon, flowing down upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, like forevermore. The second reading is 1 John, verses 1 through 2, 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father, and was revealed to us. We declare to you that we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came and stood among the disciples and said, Peace be with you. 
After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve wasn't with them when Jesus came. So the others told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which aren't written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Christ is risen. That is wonderful news, right? The disciples, though, seem to have been unsure about that. Because even after Mary met Jesus in the garden, even after they themselves met Jesus, a whole week after that, they are still hiding behind locked doors. Jesus is alive. Everything should be better now, right? But no, it doesn't work like that. People don't work like that. You don't just put all the pain and fear and shame of Good Friday behind you that quickly, no matter how good the good news is. Jesus' death had destroyed all of their hopes and expectations. It was an awful, crushing blow. It changed everything. His resurrection also changed everything, but it didn't turn back the clock on what had already happened. It didn't restore what they had originally hoped for, what they originally expected Jesus to do. It gave them something new to hope for, something even better for Jesus to do, but the old thing was still gone. And besides, they were still reeling. The shock and trauma was still fresh in their minds. Grief that is that intense doesn't just go away. So even after they have seen Jesus for themselves, that's still a ton of stuff to process. Jesus is back, but he's different. He has scars now. He keeps disappearing. He can pass through locked doors. That's weird. Everything is different, including Jesus. Different in a good way? Probably, but even if what is new is going to be better, it's still very deeply human to grieve the loss of what you knew before. So, of course, a week later, they are still hiding in that same locked room, seeming not to have made any progress at all. Or have they? And my favorite part about this story is that those disciples are all in that room with the door closed and locked, but they are together, well, except for when Thomas is out getting coffee or whatever he does. Remember, when Jesus was arrested, they all scattered. They went in different directions. But somewhere between Friday when Jesus died 
And Sunday morning, when Mary found him alive, they must have started to come back together. Mary maybe went to the tomb alone, but she knew right where to find Peter with the news. Maybe that is what was happening on that long, silent Saturday. Maybe the disciples, lost and grieving and afraid and ashamed, slowly started to find each other again. All of them, even the few faithful women who never did run away, They must all have felt like they failed since Jesus still had died. But the need to hide the shame of that failure was overwhelmed by the need to be with other people who knew. I wonder if that's the first miracle of the resurrection. That instead of turning on each other in their fear and grief, the disciples turned towards each other. They were together, even though some of them had run away. They were together, even though the men didn't really believe when Mary said she'd seen Jesus. They were together, even after Thomas still wouldn't believe all the rest of them together. They were still afraid, afraid enough to hide. But their fear didn't drive them apart, as fear so often does. Maybe there was, after all, a sign that the power of death was already loosening its grip. If even fear couldn't do its traditional job of turning people against their closest friends, maybe there could be hope for humans, after all. Maybe they don't need to be making progress just yet. Maybe they just need to be together. It's when they're together, after all, that Jesus meets them. Their fear is no obstacle. He just shows up and he tells them, despite whatever they feel, that they now have his peace. Peace be with you, he says. And when they are too caught up in their confusion and shame to even catch their breath, he breathes for them. He breathes his spirit into them. He doesn't, at that time, give them a lot of theology. He doesn't give them a five-step plan for mission. He doesn't even give them a lecture on why they should have believed Mary. Jesus simply attends to their most basic need, the need to simply breathe again. And he is calm and patient, and most of all, he's there. And he gives them the power of forgiveness, the one power they will most need if they are going to stay together. Last week, we gathered virtually online or on YouTube to celebrate the wonderful news of Jesus' resurrection. And it still is wonderful news. Jesus is alive. He's on the loose. Death has lost its grip. Pain and fear and hate no longer have the last word. But now on this second week of Easter, we acknowledge that as wonderful as that news is, it doesn't magically make all our problems go away. The bad stuff no longer has the last word, but it still can get in some next to last words that can be pretty bad. We have hope again, yes, but part of what makes hope hope is that the thing you hope for isn't quite here yet. So this week we gather again to celebrate and mourn. We gather to share our hope and We gather to share our joy and sorrow. We gather because even though some of us are happy and some are sad, even though some feel ashamed and some feel afraid, even though some believe and some doubt, the power of death is already loosening its grip. And so all of those differences, they no longer have to drive us apart. Instead, they can draw us together. 
And that's where Jesus meets us. Our fear is no obstacle. Physical separation is no obstacle to Jesus. He shows up anyway, and he tells us whatever we feel, that we now have his peace. Peace be with you, he says. And when we're too caught up in confusion and shame to even catch our breath, he breathes for us. He breathes his spirit into us. He gives us the power of forgiveness, the one power we will most need if we are to stay together. So now hear again the words that Jesus said to his disciples, the words that he says to all of us, including specifically to you. Peace be with you. And in his name, all God's people say, Amen. Let us read together the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God. Unite the whole church on earth so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You proclaim the blessing of the life forevermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation. Restore waters, cleanse the air, provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You direct the nations, O oh God. 
Guide all in authority that they shepherd their peoples in the ways of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. Especially, we pray for Ray, Christine, Pat, May Beth, Mary Lou, Joanne, Marge, Pastor Bishop, Judy C., Judy M., Ed U., Carolyn L., William S., Matt F., Marie M., Beth P., Janet R., Deb R., Darlene C., Sue M., for all who are facing coronavirus, those receiving care from Stephen Ministers, and those whom we name now either silently or aloud. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You gave us fellowship with one another in this faith community, Trinity Lutheran. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together so that we will live in love with one another and our joy may be complete. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We rejoice in the baptismal anniversaries of Lance Rice, Dana Corrigan, Carson Brewer, Lynn Smith, and Lisa Nam. We thank you for the youth in this congregation and community, and especially today for Susanna Holmes. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in their resurrection hope. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. God of love, you called us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you will loom our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Welcome to the second week of Easter. Easter is a season of surprises, and one of those surprises might be that Easter is, after all, not over. It lasts for 50 whole days. That's seven weeks plus one day. So we will keep on celebrating as we continue to celebrate. As you can tell, since you're watching this video, we are now online. However, we are working on moving towards getting outdoors for in-person worship. When that happens, we anticipate that we'll still have an online offering though. So don't worry about that. So be on the lookout for that information. Um, continue to take care of yourself and of your neighbors, and we will get through this together. 
In the meantime, I want to continue thanking all of the leaders who have helped us to get this far and remind you that for more information, you can check your email newsletter. You can also sign up for that newsletter at trinityvermilion.org. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.